Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Monday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and freaking early. It's 3.30 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. All right, I was going to wait to make this video to get all the, the links together. It takes me usually an hour or so to get all the links together, get a thumbnail together, think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up the monetization all that. My hands are shaking right now. Um, I feel like I'm going to be sick. Uh, I'm just going to sit down in front of the camera and I'm going to talk to you guys straight forward. I don't know what I'm going to call this video yet. I really, I have to be careful because uh, I, I highly doubt this is going to be monetized. And I, I don't want to endanger my uh, Google AdSense standing with my monetization and everything. But I have something to say. And this, this has to be said. This isn't about Republicans or Democrats. This isn't about liberals and wokeism. Well, actually a little bit. Or being a conservative or a liberal. This is about people that have suffered at the hands of predators and what MAGA Republicans are doing to them. Because so I'm one of those people. Stick with me here. I'm going to start at the very beginning. Now, I got most of the links. I think I have all the links down below. This started yesterday when I saw the link for this will be down below. In Texas, they're, they're trying to pass a bill uh, to... Uh, for bounties, a bounty system to turn in uh, transgender people. If somebody's out in public and there's kids around, a bounty system, I believe it was $5,000 to turn in somebody that did, if their, their appearance doesn't align with their birth certificate, then the person that, turn, if you see this person walk down the street, there's kids, turn them in. You got a bounty, a, a bounty. For this per I'm so, I'm so angry right now. I can't even do this video. Okay. The link for this will be right down below. Read it yourselves. This is yesterday. So I started thinking back and I'm like, I can't believe this is happening. I th I've talked about this before. Commercial Street, P-Town, Provincetown, Cape Cod. It's uh, it's about three hours from here. It's one, it was one of my favorite places to go vacationing with Audrey, my girlfriend that passed away, and her family. And her family was hardcore Trump voting Republicans. MAGA Republicans, okay? And they even enjoyed, they enjoyed going this, going to, to P-Town. Because they understood this. I guess maybe in the, being in this liberal state, I, I don't know. On Commercial Street in Provincetown, there's drag shows every night, especially on Friday and Saturday nights. There's, there's bars that cater to the LGBTQ community. And in front of these bars, I'll try to get one of the pictures from the actual bars, and I'll use it in my thumbnail. I got so many ideas for thumbnails. And the, the uh, performers are out in front, in the road. And there's, they're, the, the roads are packed with people. There's no cars. It's all people walking. Families, men, women, children, old, young, uh, tourists, thousands of tourists on Friday and Saturday nights. And the, the performers are out in the street performing. And it, it is fantastic to look on people's faces, and it, it's an art. Uh, the talent, the, the, uh, people uh, people pretend, pretending, uh, imitating Cher or Lucille Ball or uh, uh, Charo. And it, it, it's hilarious. It's fun. It's entertaining. It's an art form. It's entertainment. You know, and I, I'm like, oh, and it occurred, you know, when I, when I read this thing about Texas, I thought about Commercial Street in P-Town. Like, I can't believe this. They want those people, these people in Texas, they want those people arrested for a bounty system for these the people, the performers that were just performing out there, entertaining thousands of guests, tourists. Down the street from that, they usually have uh, male dancers out in front with what I would call banana hammocks. Yeah, nothing but banana, ha banana hammocks uh, from the LGBTQ community. And it's hilarious, man. You know, it's hilarious looking at the, the expression on some of the more uptight guys' faces as they're trying not to look as they're going by. You know, it, it's okay, man. You know, it, it's just part of life. People have been different for as long as there have been human beings. It's okay to love whoever you want to love. Uh, these people, now this is the point of this. Now, we're getting to the point of this because you bring up the word, I'm going to have to say this word, groomers. Okay, that go that word gets thrown around a lot with these, the, like the performers, the, these great performers that I see on Commercial Street in Provincetown. Today, this morning, 
I'm looking at stories to do this morning because I wasn't sure if I was going to do that one about Texas yesterday for today's video. And I find this librarian. I'll have the video for this down below. And I think this is in Michigan. I'm not sure. And she has just had it. She's talking a room, to a room full of Christian uh, Republican MAGA a meeting. And she's, she's so upset about what she's gone through. Because she, in front of her grandchildren, she's been called a, a pedo. Uh, she said she, she, she's, she can't even bring her grandchildren to this town. And she's standing there and she's saying, you know, we, we're doing this for our, you know, we, we're working for the community five, six days a week. I'm a, she's saying, I'm a Christian. I'm just like you, you know, and, and you have to see the video yourself. It's down below. And I think about the librarians from my town here and what they're doing, what they're calling these librarians, these good people that are working for the public library, you know, and the, it's a public library. Do I agree with all the books in there? No, but you should have the right to take them out. This librarian in this video says, you know, they, she, she brings up an 11 year old. Somebody took a video of a uh, 11 year old supposedly getting a questionable, a questionable LGBTQ book. And she says this, she says, an 11 year old should have their parents should not be in the library alone. They should be supervised. And I totally agree. I remember going to the you know, library. I, I, my, my mother went with me. They should not be. It's not the librarian's job, you know, and, and you can't just you can't cut out all the books that just suit one particular group of people. There's a lot of stuff that I'd want. What if I want the Bible and anything to do with the Bible and God out there? I don't. But what if I did? What if I want everything, anything to do with the army? The army offends me. They're killers. I want everything to do. They're murderers. I want everything to do with the United States Army out of that library because they are murderers. What if I felt like that? What if a whole bunch of us felt like that? You can't do that. There's P, you know. All right. So I started thinking about how the MAGA Republicans throw around this word groomers. And that's when I just lost my cool this morning. You know, because they're using, the, they're throwing around this word for librarians and these performers, these good people. And you know how I know that they're not groomers? Because I was groomed. I was actually groomed by a real groomer. Let me tell you what a real groomer looks like and what he did to me, okay? He was a Republican voter. How did I know he was a Republican? Because I remember at 11 years old, I saw these stickers on the back of his Volkswagen Rabbit. Brown Volkswagen Rabbit. I remember the I remember his license plate number, and it, they were PAC, P-A-C, PAC, like like shields. And I was like, what are all those stickers? Well, those are the Republican Action Committee. You know, he's very involved in politics. He's a good man. He's a policeman, Bartown, Connecticut. A a a much awarded. You know, uh, there was a shootout back in the '60s or '70s in Watertown, and he was awarded all sorts of ribbons and all sorts of stuff. Dating my mom, straight, good, Irish man, Repub Republican, cop. He used to say to me, Daryl, I'll be there for you. I remember my bike breaking when I was about 11 or 12 years old. And I could fix my bike usually, but this had something to do. The frame was bent. And it was going to take some, some heavy uh, equipment, some, heavy, so, some work, something I didn't know how to do. And this guy, Pat, Pat B., Watertown, Connecticut. Cop. He's gone now. He was born in 1922, so he'd be over 100 years old now. He died about, I don't know, I think it was 8 or 10 years ago. I wanted to go to his grave. But uh, I said, Daryl, your dad's gone, you know, because my dad died when I was 9. But I'll be there for you. I'll be there for you. That's what he told me. 11, 12-year-old boy, right? Yeah, I'll be there. You know, you lost your dad, but you can count on me. Okay? This is grooming. He used to give me, he used to sneak, sneak Playboys to me, penthouses, when I was 12 or 13 years old. I remember him giving me a condom. I was only like 10, 11, 12 years old. I had, I had no use for it. And I'm just like, you know, <laughs> I didn't lose my virginity until I was 14, I think. And it was a guy thing, you know, he was bonding with me. I remember him, I remember I had a crush on these two different girls. And uh, there's this really pretty girl, and this is a girl that was overweight, and uh, you know, just not as pretty in my opinion. 
And he gave me this advice. He said, forget the pretty one. Go with that one there. She'll give it up easier. You know, she's not as popular. This is what he told me. I remember this. This is this was his advice to me. You know, because he, he was a pal. This, this is grooming. You know what he did to me? You know what he used to do? I was afraid for the rest of my family, so I ended up going along with what happened. I remember being at his house, and he'd give me men's magazines. So I'd put it in front of me so I couldn't see what he was doing. Because this thing was to service me. 12-year-old boy. It was just, he, was about, he was about my age now. 50, he was about 57. Cop. Republican. Cop. Great, upstanding Irish straight guy. And he'd give me three dollars and quarters, three dollars and quarters, so I can go play the asteroid games after. I swear in the Bible. My whole family knows this. Everybody, all my whole friends, family, everybody around me knows this. It's a true story. You could look this guy up. Good, you know, upstanding Republican cop. This is what a groomer looks like. There, I'll be there for you. I remember him grabbing me. How's the stem of your stinger, Daryl? When my mother wasn't around. 11, 12 years old. That's how it started. How's the stem of your stinger, Daryl? That's what a groomer looks like. Every time you guys use this word for librarians and street performers and story time people, you are taking this away from us. The real story. The real, what's really going on, the real groomers, the real people that are being abused out there. You're taking this away from us. These, these people aren't groomers. I know what a groomer looks like. If there's anybody out there that works for a publishing company or anything, I really would like to, to tell my story. Have a good Monday.